What's going on guys, back on the bench, the Sony CFD510. So I had a viewer leave a comment about how to change the belt drive on the cassette deck on here. So today that's what we're going to do. I uh, actually just recently realized that James Rolfe actually has the same CFD510 and he actually uses it in the nerd videos. Namely the Amiga CD32 system one. We're at the end of part one. He actually puts a CD into this, which is actually a game from the Amiga CD32. And it describes on the box to not put it in any ordinary audio player. Which leads to a cliffhanger. It's a pretty good show. But alright, that's enough yapping. Without further ado, let's get started. So we'll go ahead and start with the back of the unit. There are only five screws that you have to take out. I would suggest maybe watching the video that I made on this previously if you have any problem with getting this back panel off. But for the sake of redundancy, I'm going to kind of just skip through. I've already had these fasteners taken out. So once you take them out, basically, this is the back. Uh, face it down to where it's face down like that. Then you can just pull it up and uh, give it a little bit of a wiggle. And then you're in. The circuit boards run on these little uh, kind of tabs here. They run inside that little groove. And then the only wire that you have to disconnect is this one, which is for the power supply. Now you can go ahead and take your back panel and uh, discard. No, I'm just kidding. Don't discard it. All right, so now we have kind of the meat and the potatoes of it. There are five fasteners, which you can take off here. Um, I feel like I might be able to go ahead and just remove the motor and this plate here without taking the whole thing off and do it that way to make it simpler. Um, but what I am going to do, just to be thorough as well, is take this off. You have to note this metal piece right here, which is important. And other than that, as you will see, it's not too hard to take apart. All right, so before taking the whole deck out, actually, what I'm going to do is try to get these little pieces of glue off here so I can move these tabs back to hopefully take this whole motor assembly off. But I am going to eventually take the whole thing out because I want to clean it. And I don't know, I might have to actually take it out to do the repair. I have not done a repair on one of these ever, so this is a learning experience. I think I'm just going to take a razor knife and try to maybe work some of this glue off. All right, so now we will go ahead and take out these five screws. There are four around the outer parameter, and then one which is on that little metal piece, which is pretty important, over in the bottom right corner. So there's two. Three, that's fine. All right, now this is kind of the important one. Sorry, didn't mean to bump you. Cool, that's fine. Okay, so now to actually take it apart, there's little plastic tabs that go into each of these little white sliders. And if you notice, when you try to take it out right now, it's kind of hung up. And that's because this arm and all of that is in there. What I do is Just kind of get it on an angle like that. So that pops out of down there. And all that is just fine. Just make sure that if this goes flying anywhere and uh, you don't know where it is, this fits into there a perfect way. There's a little slot, a couple slots down there, and then it holds it in there. But without that, you won't be able to use your uh, keys for you know changing anything because it'll just pop that whole mechanism out. But that's really the only thing you need to worry about. 
So then as you can see, there is the other side. A bit dusty, but that's to be expected. And uh, not the greatest tape deck mechanism in the world, but this is definitely going to be better than anything that you're going to be able to buy today, pretty much. I don't know, I think they need to start making good cassette deck mechs. It'd be smart for them. Just remember kind of to be careful with this. A lot of intricate parts. So I made a little bit of a boo-boo and uh, kind of skipped a step while taking the deck out. If you can see that, that right there is moving. What that actually does is that engages into this, which opens and closes the door. Um, not a big deal. I looked at it and I figured out a way to repair it. But I guess we're going to have to show an extra step, and I'm going to go ahead and take this whole uh, door mechanism off too, just so I can get to it easier. And uh, what I think I'm going to do is obviously glue it. I don't know if I'm going to do the super glue baking soda trick. I might go another route, but I think I'm going to take a long strip of metal and just kind of put it behind there to brace it, as well as glue it, uh, because... Where this runs, it's not going to interfere with it. I just have to make sure that this little triangle, it has to kind of mock that shape at the top. So it will, you know, go ahead and so it'll engage to that properly. No big deal, just an extra step. All right, so right down in here, I know it's hard to see. Right there is that little wheel that kind of runs on that thing. This can be seem kind of daunting. But really all you want to do, even though it seems daunting, is just grab this and pull it out. And it goes in just as easy, and I will show you that when we get to that point. There's two little pins right here and right here that actually hold the deck in. So what you can do, kind of go into there, and just kind of pop it out a little bit like that, and then follow suit on the other side. Yeah, so now basically... As you start to lift it up, it will open up. And then what you want to do is disconnect that one first and then kind of work its way out that way. And then kind of take a screwdriver and then pop that side out too. After a little bit of wiggling around, you should get it to where it kind of sits like that. And you can just kind of pretty much get it up like that and then uh, fish it out through the front. Okay, and there we go. This spring will probably fall out. Do not worry about it. I'll show you how to put that back in. It's very easy. Here is the door. And as we can see, the piece that yours truly broke is right here. So yeah, like I said, I'm just going to take a little piece of metal or something, kind of glue it behind that to give it some extra strength, as well as glue it. And that shouldn't be too bad. Just watch this standoff and push the tape door all the way down to where the little pins are kind of sitting against that and then just gently go around it and it'll just kind of come right out. It's really not a big deal. Looks more daunting than what it is. If these, these are your piano keys, if this thing comes out, also don't worry too much. Um, these things just kind of pop out and you can pop it back in. If they do, just remember which or you know what orientation these were in and uh, they'll just kind of be on this bar and you can take that whole thing and put it to the side. I'm going to try to keep it in there. The good thing about this is I can really get into these crevices and clean this out really well so I guess that's a good thing. All right so I'm going to go ahead and tackle this repair of this cassette door. I had to go and get some supplies. Garfield wasn't part of the supplies. I also had to go make a little piece and what this piece is actually going to do is it's going to hold or help to hold give more backing for that little piece which is our little tab that broke off of there so now this is basically going to sit right in there like that just sticking up just enough so basically i don't know how well this is going to focus but as you can see that kind of fits that perfectly so as it sets on there it's going to be having a little bit of backing by going on that as well as i'm going to put a little bit of epoxy on the bottom of that to mate it back to the plastic so not a big deal this is unfortunate but yeah i really should have slowed down when i was doing that but uh yeah 
I think this will work okay. Not a big deal, but... All right, so since this is going pretty much to go in there like that, I'm going to go ahead and rough that up with some sandpaper. And then we're just going to kind of scuff this up where we're going to go ahead and put that little brace. Okay. I'm going to want to clean that up a little bit. All right, so now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rough up the end of this too so it'll stick to the epoxy. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so I figured I'm just going to use the good old JB Weld epoxy. This stuff works really well. I've used it in the past and, well, obviously it works really well. So what you do with this, this is pretty easy. It has two separate parts that you have to actually mix to get it to activate. So we're going to take and just put a little bit. That was a little more than I wanted, but that's okay. So now we just give it a little stir. This will activate it. And then uh, you got a pretty good little window of opportunity before this stuff starts setting but once it starts to set uh, if you don't have everything just perfectly in place um, it won't really stick very well let's mix that up a little better all right that should be better so now what i'm going to do i'm going to try to not make too much of a mess i've already roughed this up because you're going to want you know to file that so it'll adhere better and what i think i'm going to do so we're just going to go right in just give a nice put a nice good little bit on there and then i'm just going to Try to prop it up and then set it on there. And see, we want to have just enough sticking out to grab that other little piece. Which I think I'm going to. Give a little dunkaroo. And then try, this is going to be difficult. Do something like this. Okay, sorry, I might have to do this off camera. Okay, so there's the basic idea. I uh, I think that'll work just fine. I think I'm going to let this dry and then go over it with a little more. This part in here is kind of a void, so it's not really going to interfere with anything. And then I might put a little more up on top there. But yeah, I'm going to let this set. All right, so might not be the most beautiful thing in the world, but I think that'll work just fine. Maybe it'll be stronger than before. Probably not. So let's go ahead and let that set up. All right, so while we're letting that dry, we're gonna go ahead and move onward and upward. So now after going through and scraping off those little pieces of glue, what you wanna do is go ahead and flip it over and there's two screws right here, which is a number one Phillips. So we'll go ahead and remove those now. And what I did was I clipped these back on just so it'll kind of hold it while I actually take these fasteners out. And again, as always, keep your fasteners together and separated just to avoid confusion later. All right, and it feels like it kind of plopped out. So I'm gonna to try to grab these screws. I've got one. Oh, nope, I do have both. There it comes out. 
your motor. There's another screw in here. All right, there's both of the screws. And if you notice this black stuff on my finger, that's actually part of the belt. That's not going to focus. Yes, yeah, so this is actually part of the belt, and it turns to mush. It turns to like a greasy mush, so it gets everywhere. Be careful of that. And there will be a lot of belts still left in there sticking to everything. So, all right. Now we have the main motor out. Now I'm going to go ahead and do like I did before and pop these tabs back and just kind of pop this plate out, which shouldn't be too hard. All right, so there's one side. Now I think I can just kind of yeah, we've got that. So it looks like it's holding on the cap stand, or uh, that thing, and then that thing. Seems like there's something else holding it, though. I think it's just that little plastic nub right there. It's a little nub. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So this just comes off just like that. It kind of holds on this little tab right here. Uh, maybe we'll go ahead and clean the rest of that glue off so it'll go back in there a lot easier. And now we can kind of see the whole heart of the whole thing. But you got your flywheel. You can see pieces of the belt on there. And there's this wheel which has belt rem remnants on it. And uh, I'm trying to figure out from here which belt is which and... Uh, you know, because there's a little belt and a big belt, meaning a small diameter and a larger diameter. And uh, just going to have to figure out where they all go. And then uh, go ahead and see if I've got the right belts from my bag of belts. And then go from there. So after taking a look, uh, I figured out it's really not too bad. It's going to be a belt that goes from here to this one. And then you got one that goes from here actually to the motor, which sets about right there. And those are the only two belts. But before I go to start putting belts on them, I'm obviously going to have to take off the remainder of these belts. Which, uh, yeah, that's what they turn into. They turn into mush. So probably going to get some isopropyl alcohol and a bunch of Q-tips. And uh, maybe a pick or something and try to figure out how to get all them out of there but uh mechanically everything else is working fine and uh, i guess i got to clean it up anyways with all the dust bunnies and stuff like that but yeah let's go ahead and clean this thing up so we can go ahead and throw them belts on there and uh see if we're wasting our time or not well, all right so it's not perfect but i could probably sit here all night and uh wouldn't get it all out but did as good as I could. All right, so now I'm going to throw some belts on there. By the way, there's the remainder of the belt. Well, all right, so you can see I kind of got our spring from our door, kind of holding that out. This is how it's got to be. Oops. So I went through my assortment of belts and found two that I think will work. Um, I'm going to have to buy the specific belts for this. And I would recommend you do that too if you plan on doing this. But um, So what we're going to have to do is actually take our motor from this point. Well, after figuring out you know which belt goes where, it's a shorter, fatter one for this top one. And then the bottom one which goes to the flywheel to the motor is a skinnier one but it's longer so what you have to do is put this in here and uh, mock it up where it's gonna go you can see the screw holes kinda line up with those holes and then you're gonna take and then feed your uh, belt through this and then it will move over that way and uh, it's going to want to kind of go, it, 
it's going to kind of want to go like that a little bit, but it should kind of hold it in place. And then uh, you can just kind of plop this whole little uh, bracket, I guess this is, back into them little clips. So in theory, let's see how this works. I think the fun part from here on out is going to be flipping it over because you're going to have to actually move it back into position and see the belt will actually pull it back. But you're going to want to pull it into position and then put your fasteners back into your motor. So hopefully this will be attempt one. I'm kind of thinking, I'm going to be real careful here. And I'm going to try to keep this all in frame so you can see what I'm doing. But see, we've got our belt connected. We've got this one on there. And hopefully, while keeping pressure on here, holding the motor to this whole assembly, flip it around like this. And then we should be able to pull back and kind of see where our bolt holes are where our threads are going to go through. For me, that looks about good. I'm just going to drop one in. And then you can kind of get it with your screwdriver. Then torque it down to where you feel it stop and then back off just a little bit so you can still move it around you still got to get your other uh, your other hole lined up which will be like right there I will drop the screw in and hopefully I think it just went right in but we got that on there you just kind of want to line the screws up um, you get kind of a lot of leeway because the motor really holds on to the belt really well. And, uh, yep, everything is looking good. Now, <laughs> have to make another repair. All I'm going to do is just cut back this wire a little bit and just get that solder hot and just kind of put it back on there. And then that should do fine. Uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll slap everything back in. And then the fun part, we get to test it. So, I don't know the last time this thing actually played a tape. I will ask my buddy. And, uh, well, it's been that long since it's played a tape, so hopefully it'll play one again. Okay, I went ahead and put some flux on there. Now, very, very carefully, just kind of flow some more solder into there. And that should be just fine. 
All right, so after going through every single rubber band, O-ring, belt band, everything that I've had, a little tiny cogwheel right down there that has a little uh, kind of an O-ring thing around it. And because I couldn't match up the exact same size, the, uh, the deck is working. It's reversing. It's fast-forwarding. It's doing everything. It's just, and it's playing, it's just the playback speed is a little bit slow. So, I mean, that's definitely chalked up to that. So, definitely get on eBay. I did see the uh, exact set for this. So, uh, get on there and buy that if you plan on doing this. And, uh, yeah, that little, it's about 10 millimeters around that little cog wheel down there. And, uh, which is somewhere roughly around 3 eighths of an inch. A little bit bigger than 3 eighths of an inch, I think. But, yep, so, all right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and slap everything back together. There's the repair. It'll work pretty darn good, I think. Alright, so what you want to do is, as you can see, you just kind of want to take this and go ahead and... Actually, yeah, we'll remove this for now. And this is going to go up and in like this. Got to kind of put one side in first and then put the other side in. So now that just, see there's the leg of it. There's the other one. Not too hard. You should be able to figure that out when you get to that point. Alright, so there they're in there. I know because of light it's kind of hard to see, sorry about that. But it's pretty intuitive, you'll be able to figure it out. So now... I'm going to go ahead and put this piece back in. Alright, so yeah, we just went ahead and threw that back in. This goes underneath this, so just kind of remember that. Well, all right, so I got it all back in. Now, the big step that I missed, and you're going to need to do this step going back in, is before I remove this, after taking off all the screws, you're supposed to open the door. Oh, by the way, check on our repair. See, you can see it right down there. It goes into, the, into that white uh, little thing there, and then it grabs it. So that's working just fine. So now anyways, when you go to put this in, keep the door open. Remember you got to line up all these tabs in here and you're basically going to be fighting putting all those tabs in and it's going to want to also get hung up on the little record uh, thing here. This actually, when this pushes up, it presses this little switch and uh, that's how the machine knows that it's recording. So just kind of flip that back and then it should plop right down in there. And then uh, you're pretty much good to go from there. But just like I said, because see, if you don't open the door, that little white piece is holding on to that. So see, you open it and then the whole thing will just come free. That was where I messed up. Okay, and now so coming back to this, basically... You just take it to where it's oriented like this, and uh, basically where that's where the screw goes through there is going to line up into that standoff. And then you can kind of see the track right there where it goes, and uh, just kind of run that little wheel right in there. Kind of like that, and then see, you can just kind of push it right down into there. And then our last screw will go into there. All right, got it all popped back together. I'm going to go ahead and play this tape with the door open. It kind of makes the speed a little bit better. I think the extra kind of little bit of pressure holding the tape in there, uh, kind of stopping the wheels from turning, so to speak. So I'm just going to go ahead and play a little snippet of this tape. Uh, for copyright purposes, um, but I don't know with the speed if 
they'll be able to pick it up. I'm not really sure. Okay. Something's gonna happen. Okay, so yeah, definitely noticeable wow and flutter. But um, like I said, that's just going to be chalked up to that cog in there. Uh, if you plan on doing this, like I said, again, make sure you get the correct belt set. All right, going to try another one. But yeah, so that's all we have for today. Thanks guys for coming along. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section. And uh, have a good one. And if you like this, and if you like things like this, uh, please consider subscribing. If not, no big deal. Don't worry about it. Have a good one.